Malaysia's battle-hardened opposition leader Anwar Ibrahim. Mr. Ibrahim is a controversial figure himself. In 1993, he became deputy prime minister and was tipped to lead the country, but a falling out with the leadership back then saw him sacked in 1998. After his removal, he found himself charged with corruption, given a six-year jail term that sparked huge street protests at the time. He's also fought a conviction for the crime of sodomy. Homosexual acts are illegal in Malaysia, and Mr. Ibrahim is currently making last-ditch efforts to avoid a five-year jail term. A Malaysian court will soon rule in his final appeal against that charge. Well, Amra, Anwar Ibrahim is in London at the moment, and he joins me in the GMT studio. Uh, Anwar Ibrahim, it is uh, a pleasure to have you here. Just going through your track record as former very senior politician tipped for the top job now in opposition fighting for your legal life in a sense are you utterly sick of the fight you have had to fight in malaysia still you have to endure this you have um, a commitment uh, you believe in the reform agenda you understand the price you have to pay in fighting against authoritarian rule, and uh, that's well, a commitment. Well, to be clear, you're fighting against the courts. You stand as convicted of the charge of sodomy, and unless you win this last-ditch appeal, you are going to go back to prison. Having been there before, you're going back. Yeah, but the courts uh, operate under the thumbs of the executive. We are not talking about independent judiciary. Uh, the system's opaque. You know there's no free media. There is, uh, therefore, a system that's been compromised. Well, that's a message, if I may say so, that you've delivered to the Malaysian people for many years now. The Malaysian people don't really seem to buy it. I mean, your opposition coalition ran hard in the 2013 elections, but you couldn't win. We won the popular votes. There was no free media. You have something like 89 seats, and the, the ruling party coalition has yes, many more. 52% of the popular votes in the country. Uh, and Narendra Modi, 38%, he became Prime Minister. We won 52% of popular vote in the absence of a free media and a fraudulent electoral process. And this is a remarkable feat I, in any democratic country. I talked about the street protests that greeted your imprisonment all those years ago. I think it was, what was it, six years you had in prison. Yes. You complained bitterly about the treatment you received in yes. prison. Solitary confinement. Yeah. There's no sign right now, is there, that people are going to take back to the streets on your behalf? No. Uh, I, I don't uh, necessarily uh, suggest that they should go to the streets because the battle is still in the courts. Um, but I but don't do you suggest they should if you I lose this last battle? I don't believe any authoritarian government should assume that people just would condone uh, any act of atrocities, not against me, other members of parliament, other political leaders over the issue of sod sodomy or sedition, uh, terrorism, whatever. And this cannot be tolerated in any modern civil society. Are you, and we don't know whether you'll end up back in prison, but we do know that you remain the most sort of polarizing and controversial figure in your country. Are you prepared and are you determined to continue the political battle? Yes, we, are, we have to combat against racism, religious bigotry, endemic corruption, abuse of power in the country. You have seen the MH370, how it was treated. There's no media access, there's no transparency, clearly it's incompetent, and no one is held accountable. Well, interesting, you've steered the conversation to a missing airliner MH370. The government accuses you of, of playing politics with a case which is obviously deeply upsetting to the families of those who are still missing, also extraordinarily sensitive, and you just continue to stir up, make mischief with something that is far too serious for politics, isn't it? Steve, we initially supported all undertaking initiative by the government. But when they decided to erase the records of the radar, when they did not release the cargo manifest... They did release the They manifest. released after three months. And it's questionable whether that sort of cargo manifest is the true uh, facts have been adduced. It's been questioned. And you imply a cover-up. What, yes, what could they possibly be covering up? Well, I don't know. But the fact is that it is the responsibility of any authority in government to release information. We have the best, most uh, sophisticated radar system. And it's not uh, being told what was in the uh, citation, uh, citing of All the right. radar.
Anwar Ibrahim, we have to leave it there. But thank you very much for coming into the GMT studio. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very thank much you. indeed. Thanks a lot.